An agency that would see to the rehabilitation of so-called repentant Boko Haram insurgents might be on its way to being established. And the Buhari media organization, the BMO, has stated that President Mohamed Buhari is fully in charge of critical affairs of government of the country. This is Plus Politics, and I am Benny Ark. Barely two years after the abduction and continued incarceration of Leah Sharibu, who was not released alongside her mates because of her refusal to renounce her faith, the Nigerian Senate has, re has introduced a bill that will create an agency that will see to the rehabilitation and de-radicalization and integration of repentant insurgents in the country. So-called repentant Boko Haram suspects have already started receiving pardon from some state government. And joining us to discuss this this evening on PLOS Politics is political technocrat Dayo Kayode. Thank you for joining us, Dayo. And ben, also, how are you? Fine, thank you very I much. You're going to allow me into your arc. <laughs> you're already in the arc. Welcome <laughs> in. And also, political analyst Boloba. Thank you very much for joining us, Boloba. And good to have you with us on the show this evening. Now, let's get into it straight. Now, the Senate on Thursday began moves to establish an agency that would see to the rehabilitation and the uh, radicalization and integration of repentant insurgents into the country. Is this move a right move that they should be making right now? Yes, let's start with you. Ah, the question is this. Yes. When you have maruders, killers, people who have maimed somebody else, what does our constitution say about that? Because Boko Haramis are people that have been sacking people from their villages, killing, even killing pregnant women, taking hold of people's uh, properties and all that. Do they deserve to be pardoned? He who kills by the sword should die by what? Petting the person's head? Between you and me, I, I, don't, I don't think our National Assembly, Senate now, knows their onions. Do they want to liken, liken uh, what Boko Haram is doing with what? Happened uh, 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 as regards the Niger Delta militants. As, as regards the Niger Delta militants, yeah. instead of them to be talking, if I, it is appalling, it is sickening. Instead of saying to be talking about local content, I expected them to be talking about local. Co you, you remember what happened as regards uh, the kind of vehicles they want to be using? Yes. Say they can't, be, they can't be using innocent. And they will be you. When, listen to this, listen to this. Imagine the Senate coming up with laws as regards local content. Yes. That, okay, National Assembly, Houses of Assembly, uh, uh, Federal Parasetas, MDGs, even embassies should buy vehicles from innocent. Innocent, innocent vehicles that are being produced in Nigeria. Imagine the quantum of people that have been employed. Imagine a lot of people that have been taking, who loans have been taken off the streets. They are now talking about, they are now talking about pardoning of, uh, of uh, uh, insurgents. My brother, it is appalling. I don't think this is what they should be talking about at this time, at, at this time of, our, of our national uh, discourse. The word, the underlining words right there are repentant and de-radicalized. Well, is this move a move in the right direction? Your thoughts, please. It is obviously a political move. A political move because Nigeria is the only bakery I know on the face of the earth where people don't want to mix the flour, but they want to eat the cake. And you know what? Uh, the culture of rent seeking and the fact that God has been so kind to you people, you have a source of revenue somewhere in the Niger Delta. Everybody comes up with a package to get 
you know, some higher share that he or she or that region even gets from. So I'm sitting here, I'm thinking it's a political move. If we want to look at the science of it, there are two evidences that I have that have convinced me that it may just be, it may be an exercise in futility. About two and a half, three weeks ago, I was in the city of London. And I, you know, just as I was getting ready to, get, because I was in southern London, just as I was getting ready to leave the house in the morning, I got the alarm that somebody had knifed people in Streatham, not too far away from where I was. And eventually later in the day, in the day we got to know that it was one that was thought to have been deradicalized whilst he was serving a sentence in Her Majesty's prison, and that that was actually the third instance of a supposedly deradicalized. So it took the government having to put a bill before parliament that people convicted of Islamic fundamentalist terroristic acts should not even be released at the end of their tariff. Yes. And whilst I was reading on that, on that particular story and the, the bill that it precipitated from, from the government, I also read instances in France. And the conclusion of the scientific community is that the you know, people who are, who are qualified a uh, psychologist is that it is either very, very expensive or near impossible to re-indoctrinate and de-radicalize de Islamic fundamentalist terrorists. And I'm sitting there thinking Nigeria does not even have the resources to start with. Two is proven evidences in societies where forensic records are kept speak to the fact that this people it, this is and is, is going to be an exercise of fertility so you know what beyond the politics of it the science of it the jury for me is still out sorry are you yeah. also aware my brother that early this week i think in whether in Baeza or one of these states there, some hoodlums were caught. Boko Haramis, they were caught. Being led by people in army uniform. All right? And some of them were found out to be part of those that have been released what? to the okay. society. We're going to, we're going to come to the course of our uh, deliberations this evening. Now, what about you? They say could be an exercise in futility. Um, but not just, my opinion. Yes, my be, that, my be, my not, be. Not my Your opinion. opinion. Yes. Not not so much my opinion, but the submissions of a of a college of scientists, Science. psychologists, uh, forensic analysts, uh, yes. and all that. Now, I say that to say because already we we have a, a few a couple of cases where some states have already um, rehabilitated some of these de-radicalized and repentant Boko Haram suspects back Supposedly, into. To say, to suspect, supposedly supposedly suspect, suspect, rehabilitated. Yes. And Borono State comes to mind, Zamfara is also. And, and given the incident that happened in Borono State weeks ago, one would have thought that that shouldn't have been the move the government oh. should be oh. making. 1,400 suspected members of Boko Haram, they said, because they now found out that some of those people were suspected. They were not necessarily Boko Haram um, members. But I, I, I say that to ask at the end of the day, doesn't this at the end of the day um, make no the fight against insurgency if these people are reintroduced back into the just, society just what? just to to further enrich the point you've made now yes. but in the in, in a manner that you may not quite like yes the civilian jtf in borno state 
an army of civilians who had to come to the point of coming together to rescue themselves. Mm. Hunters, farmers, youths. They have officially opined that they believe that the, the predisposition of government to believe that these people could be de-radicalized is ultimately going to prolong the malady. Exactly. So I'm sitting there now. I don't know what could have instructed their opinion, but they have affirmatively submitted that they do not support the idea that there is anything that is called effective de-radicalization. And again, time. and again, if you look at this book of Aramis, you know that they are Islamic fundamentalists. Their activities are based on a particular ideology of which they have grown with. How possible? Is repentance impossible? Do you, do you, how possible is it for them to now say they want to de-radicalize de de them? Let me give you an instance. If your phone has caught virus, you will take it to probably computer village to reconfigure it. And when it's reconfigured, it will show you clearly that this phone has been successfully reconfigured. And then you put some test and all that into it. And when you use it, it will follow your instructions. My brother, how do you now want to test those that they said they have de-radicalized? And incidentally, this issue I told you just now happened in that same Bronu state. Let's, Are you with me? Let's even speak. Now, now the issue is this. Somebody who have been developed on a particular ideology, now captured by, say, federal government, now being released back to the society. Who do you think we owe allegiance to? Bear in mind that these people, they have more money and they treat these Boko Haramis more than they treat our, our, our Nigerian soldiers. Who do you think that we owe allegiance to? We are, we are just pushing ourselves the more to the tip of the cliff. Now, I'm going, to, I'm going to come to you and ask you this. Do you think, is there a possibility that this, the radicalization program, may be breeding spies and agents of recruitment for yeah, exactly the Boko Haram insurgents? <laughs> and if it. yes, what measures should be put in place to ensure that indeed they are de-radicalized and if rehabilitated back to society, they don't go back to, to, to their base of being terrorists? We live in a society where the majority of those who have been incarcerated in our society, those who have served custodial sentences, majority of them, when they come out from such sentences, are prone to recidivism because society, in fact, has den effectively denied them the valuable resources of rehabilitation. Yeah. In fact, for, so, for decades, for decades, our penal system was more punitive, was more punitive than rehabilitative. And as we speak, even after the terminological changes in our penal system, from calling our prisons prisons, to now correctional centers, <laughs> we know that they still lack the valuable equipment, the, the valuable resources, human tools, equipment, and otherwise to rehabilitate, rehabilitate civil criminals, convicted criminals. Yes. Somebody is now telling me that with all the extenuating circumstances that an average Boko Haramist will be released back to society, to probably the factors that led him down the, down the drain of terrorism in the first place. Somebody is telling me that someone somewhere believes in effective de-radicalization. I wish I wish them well. well let, let's let's consider the, the pros and the cons of the ongoing uh, de-radicalization and 
The reintegration of repentant Boko Haram insurgents under the Operation Safe Corridor of the federal headquarters. What, what are the possible pros and cons? You see, I like to use, I like to follow that your word, safe corridor. In fact, what they are doing is just to make those corridors highly unsafe. All right? They are trying to increase the level of vulnerability of people to activities of this Boko Haramist. The issue is this. A leopard, a leopard, no matter what to do to it, will never change its skin. Bear in mind, we have people who have been re rehabilitated back into society already from ah, this from this sect. Listen, not from the. It can't be from this sect. Have you seen them on the street? Can you prove it that you have seen? That, that, can you prove it that you have seen them on the street? I say of recent, some people were still apprehended in a particular state. I think maybe Bruno or whatever. Some of them that led that uh, activity was wearing I mean uniform. And they now found out they were those that they said they have already rehabilitated. Just like this, my brother said, do we even have the equipment to rehabilitate them? Even ordinary people that are suffering from uh, smoking in their help and all that, at a yaba pause, what do they call it? Go and check. Do we even have enough resources to even rehabilitate them? Now, do we have the equipment to rehabilitate them? Now, last even question. when when they have been sort of rehabilitated, Tated. do you know how to test? Have you been able to test them? Do we have that capacity? Do we have that temerity? Even abroad, even abroad. It can never happen. And even the issue is this. These are people that have been killing. Maybe sucking people from their... But initially, you were saying you don't know where they are. You say you don't know where they are. You're not saying you are, you are taking them, you are bringing them back to the society. Number two, there was a time they were also saying there are, there are, there are soldiers that have been let, let loose in Libya. In Libya. In uh, this, in that. They are now here. You are now saying you want to unleash them again on the society. So that means, I mean, don't let me say this. Sorry. Now, well, about, um, last month, the Nigerian military said no fewer than 608 repentant Boko Haram insurgents were undergoing right. the de-radicalization, the rehabilitation, and reintegration DRR program under its Operation Safe Corridor in Malami City, Gombe State. Now, do you think this should have even come up for deliberation on the floor of the Senate in the first place? Oh. Like I told you in my introductory uh, remark, I said the politics of it is quite logical to me. And you must remember that the Senate, the chamber of the Senate is one of the most fervid points of politicking in Nigeria. The the motion was not moved by a senator from the South South. The motion was not moved by a senator from the Southeast. The motion was not moved by a senator from the Southwest. Not even North Central. It was moved by a senator from Yobe, Northeast. And I would suppose that maybe out of confoundment that what else can we put on the table or out of sheer sense of capitulation or indeed out of political machination to also make sure that more resources are directed in the direction of this region. I'm sitting here now, my emotional persona my spiritual persona as a Nigerian, praying that it works, but my intellectual persona is telling me, Bola, those who have societies that work, said they've garnered enough evidences that speak to the futility of such an exercise. Yes. I can only wish them well. 
Now, let's, let's take a look at this. Yesterday, 19 February 2020, made it exactly two years, um, Leah Sharibu was abducted alongside other schoolgirls. Unfortunately, she was held back by, by her captors, and she's still in captivity of the Boko Haram insurgent. And sometimes, some weeks back, there was, there was a rumor that made the rounds that she was, she was pregnant, she was found with a child. Um, putting all of this together, how do we begin to marry all of this scenario? I mean, up two years now, Leah is still um, under the captive of Boko Haram, and here we are talking about the radicalization of the same people. Like you rightly said, they've made people, they've killed people. How do we go marry all of these scenarios together? The, the ongoing war against the Sonja Sea, the insecurity bedeviling the nation, and now the call for the rehabilitation and reintegration of these same insurgents. <clears throat> Thank you for even bringing in uh, Leah Sharibu, Leah Sharibu yeah. uh, into this matter. My heart still goes to the families of uh, that young girl that has been held in captivity for the past uh, two years. years. Now, along the line, some people went there to negotiate for the release of, I think, Leah Sharibu was part of Dapchi Girls. Yes, she was, she was Dapchi, yes. Dapchi Girls. To release those Dapchi Girls. According to them, they agreed to release them. But perhaps, I mean, they wouldn't be mentioning names and all that because nobody knew Leah Sharibu was still there then. Nobody, it, it was, she was just one of those girls, okay? But unfortunately, when they now brought in all those girls, they found out that they were holding back somebody because of her religion. She said she was not ready to leave her religion for another one. Now, how are we sure, how are we so sure that Leah Sharibu is still with them? Okay? How are we so sure that she's still with them? Have they been able to show us a video of Leah Sharibu speaking life to her family. Now, let's now come back to rehabilitation of these people. If those people that held this girl a captive are being caught today, do you think they'd be able to pay for the level of psychological stress, emotional stress this girl had gone through? that her parents had gone through, her siblings had gone through, her neighbors had gone through. I will not be saying you want to pardon such a person. It's heinous. To say you want to pardon such a, such a person, I will not say you, are, you want to rehabilitate and bring that person back to the society. There is no how they are going to drop what they have grown to be able to in Yoruba, they always say, "Pe, to what the jaguar be osheka, dried fish." There's no how you can bend a a a, a dried fish. S, it will cut into pieces. All right. So no, when, yes. How, how do you? We, we need, we need to wrap this segment to... quickly up, and I just want to ask Bella about in, in closing of this segment, in, in the light of the myriad of insecurity and security challenges we're facing, what would you advise this program to be to be suspended, to be called off? Which program? The rehabilitation program going on under the safe corridor. I want to believe that the Nigerian army may be decided to take on the program as a measure of plethorizing the opportunities to end the war. And I can only empathize with the leadership of the army. But war is a science. War is a science. And some things are proven to work or not work. I would want to believe that the Nigerian army has had enough opportunity, time-wise, to review the resources they've deployed to the deradicalization program. And they should conclude, based on science, if it's working or not working. I cannot sit in a, in a TV studio 
and be pontificating at them. I would suppose the leadership of the army is made up of people who are well schooled. They should you know, let the result speak for itself. All right, Brother Ba, thank you very much for your contribution, and also Dio Kaude for your contributions in this segment. Thank you very much. Thank you for staying with us. We'll take a short break now, and when we return, we'll discuss the possibility of President Buhari still being in control of the affairs of government. Stay with us.